Great to be here. I had the fright of my life this morning. I woke up in my hotel bed. I turned on the TV and this televangelist came on. He said, you may not know this, but today you have already sinned. <laughs> I thought I've just got up. What could I possibly have done? I turned to my sister. She didn't know. <laughs> what is it? Oh, what off? What off? So my name is Danny. Yes, I'm from Scotland, not Ireland. You lot seem to think I'm from Irish. When, when, you, when you hear my accent, you go, "Are you Irish?" I'm not Irish. It's not difficult to tell the difference between a Scottish and an Irish person. This is a Scottish person talking to you right now. Hello, how are you? Very nice to be here. <laughs> this would be an Irish person. Diddly dee, potatoes. Did you hear that? <laughs> Did you hear it? Did you hear it? And, uh... Do you know what? Uh, this is true. Last year, I got booked to do the Irish American Comedy Festival in New York. The, the woman phoned me up in the middle of the night in Glasgow. Hello, I said, Danny, would you like to come to New York and do the Irish American Comedy Festival? I said, well, the only problem with that is I'm not actually... Sorry, did you say New York? Diddly dee, potatoes, I'm there. <laughs> oh, never been to New York before. I didn't know how to bring it up. I felt quite guilty. How'd you bring up the fact that you're not Irish? I walked out in front of a thousand people. I said, hello, any Irish Americans in? And everybody cheered and I said, well, I've never been to Ireland either. <laughs> See, uh, I'm from Scotland. I want to talk to you about the Scottish diet. Do you know, we now officially have the worst diet in the world. <laughs> Think about that. That includes African countries. <laughs> countries with no food at all. <laughs> it's actually more nutritional to have no food at all than Scottish food. It's technically better to be starving than Scottish. <laughs> now, when I was a kid at school, my mum used to tell me the same thing every time. If I didn't finish everything on my plate, she'd say, you know, Danny, there are kids in Africa who would give their right arm for what you've left in that plate. I had no idea at the same time African mothers are telling their kids similar stories about us. <laughs> really, you're starving, Mawabi. Guess what? There are kids in Scotland chewing on haggises that would love to be as hungry as you. <laughs> I think you can tell an awful lot about a country by what it eats for breakfast. See, we in Scotland, we like a fry-up. Bacon, sausage, eggs, beans, chips, whatever. Bring out your dead. We'll have it. <laughs> so, long, so long as it's deep fried. But it's our way of saying to the rest of the world, it doesn't matter what you plan to do to us today, it's not nearly as bad as what we've just done to ourselves. We've eaten that. <laughs> now, you compare that to other breakfasts, like the French breakfast, a croissant. <laughs> Still a little croissant. That is all I want. This is all I will eat. Just a tiny piece of tin, tiny piece of cousin. And then I will have to lie down. <laughs> because I have eaten my cousin. And I feel quite full. It's not a breakfast, is it? It's a bit of pastry, for God's sake. We put that on top of a meat pie. <laughs> I tell you what. It says a lot about the French, though, doesn't it? It says, we are flaky and a little bit gay. <laughs> well, that, that went down better than I thought. Right. Swiss, they have muesli, sawdust and raisins. How typically non-committal is that? You ever poured milk into muesli? The milk comes flying back out. Oh! What's that? It says a lot about the Swiss. They don't want to get involved. Nothing wants to get involved. You Canadians, I haven't had time to find out what you have for breakfast, but I tell you what, you're all out running first thing in the morning before you've even had breakfast. What's all that about? You coming for a run, Danny? Why? Are we being chased? <laughs> what possible reason can you have for going for a run? You're all out there with your Walkmans. <laughs> Getting to the... Uh, do you know what I, I, I can't stand? It's people that get to the pedestrian crossing. It's a red hand. That means stop what you're doing. 
take a breather. It doesn't mean do this. If you ever see someone do that and you're standing next to them, just you walk on the spot. Just... <laughs> It'll annoy them. It'll annoy them. It'll annoy them. Anyway, the Germans, folks, they have the most interest in breakfast, because you know what the Germans have for breakfast? Couldn't be more typically German. They have liver. <laughs> liver, yes. I have just woken up. Bring me a vital organ! <laughs> Bring me the filtering gland of a dead beast! <laughs> Do you know what? I'm proud of the Scottish breakfast, and I'll tell you why. I don't like posh food very much. I was in a nice restaurant here in Montreal the other night. On the menu, I saw the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Corn-fed, farm-reared breast of chicken. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't care about its childhood. <laughs> I'm going to eat it. I'm not going to interview it. <laughs> Corn-fed, farm-reared, good at tennis. <laughs> it's a chicken. Do you think the chicken knows it's corn-fed? Hey, that's my question. Do you think they're there in the barn, the corn-fedders one end of the barn, the grain-fedders on the other, corn-fedders all very... <laughs> oh, I like my corn, baby. Mm, yeah. I can't get enough of my corn. Mm, yeah. Oh, belly full of corn for the corn-fed chicken. And all the, all the grain-fedders getting increasingly annoyed. Look at that guy over there. <laughs> Look at him. You see that guy there? Yeah, see him? What, that guy? <laughs> Not that guy, that guy. <laughs> Always been a problem in the chicken world. <laughs> Not being able to point. <laughs> I have a theory about Scottish culture. See, I mentioned that we have the worst diet in the world. We also have the worst national instrument in the world. <laughs> The bagpipes. The missing link between noise and sound. <laughs> How did that happen? When the great cultural cake was being split up, we got the last slice there, didn't we? <laughs> you think about the great evolution of instruments of our time, you know? The, the Austrians gave us pianos, and the Germans gave us violins, and the Italians gave us many great brass instruments, and the French, whatever they gave us, a triangle, probably. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> they could be bothered bend, uh, bend the middle into the... <laughs> little do, huh? It's Just a little triangle, it is. But, but listen, at some point in history, they all got together. All these wonderful instruments got together and said, listen, let's see if we can create something beautiful together. We'll call it an orchestra. And so it began, the piano player said, I think I might have something. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and then the trumpet player. Do, 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 do. And then the violin. <laughs> All together. <laughs> oh, that's great. I think we're on to something here. Is everyone here, by the way? Hang on! Absolutely great. Thank you very much. That's it. That's Coming up. You want to know what happened to me today at work? Oh. Patrice O'Neill.